that we've conducted an overview of the interface in 3D Coat and many of the common elements that you'll find throughout the application, we can now dive a bit deeper by looking at the splash screen in 3D Coat that appears anytime you launch the application or if you go to the file menu under new it'll bring this up as well. Okay, so you have some options that will launch you directly into a specific task. So these will just save you a few steps uh, as opposed to starting with just a blank screen. However, if you prefer a blank screen, you can always go to the Edit menu under Preferences. Click on the Viewport tab, and you can uncheck these, hit OK. And so now what you have is just a, a blank scene each time. So I'm going to File Menu, New, and I can test that. Okay. So let's go back and turn these back on. Hit OK, and a splash screen reappears. All right, so let's explore these a little bit. Um, I don't want to go into great detail because I will talk about some of these topics in more detail later. But what you have is voxel sculpting and surface mode sculpting exist in the same workspace. Okay, they're almost identical, except voxel sculpting utilizes volumetric pixels. If I go to the help menu under 3D Coat Manual, I can scroll down to the voxel layers panel section here or page 40. And this will give me a, a bit better description of what the difference is between voxels and surface mode. Okay, but essentially what you have is on a 3D grid you have volumetric pixels that are turned on or turned off with every brush stroke or operation when you're in volume mode. Simultaneously 3D Coat will remesh let me go ahead and click on the mannequin here I'll zoom in and let's say I want to work on the head here I have the 4 key uh, or I hit the 4 key to turn on wireframe I can hit the 4 key again to toggle it back off and what you see is this outer mesh okay and I'll hit the H key while I'm hovering over an object to actually select it at any point in time. I don't have to have the pick tool, which actually this operates much like the pick tool, but you only have to hover over. You don't click uh, with your stylus or your mouse. You just hit the H key and it will bring you to that particular object. And you can see it's already selected. So if you have a long layer list here, you can see how tedious that could be without this tool. So again, I'll just hit H so the head is selected. Okay, and I can increase the resolution at the bottom of the panel or at the very bottom under Res Plus and it will just double. It's going to tell me how much it's going to increase or how much RAM uh, it's going to use. Okay, and so what happens is if I Oops, wrong tool. Under adjust, under move. This is basically just a large brush, so I'm going to right click and drag left and right to bring my brush size down. Okay. And with the move tool selected, watch what happens when I let go of the mouse. You can see 3D Coat simultaneously remeshes. Okay, so it calculated the volume, and the voxels themselves are hidden or invisible to the user. 3D Coat calculates it internally, and then it will reform this mesh to fit nice and uniformly. Now, this is great in many circumstances because uh, it's much more flexible and forgiving than working in surface mode. Uh, for example, if I were to uh, going to hover over and hit H 
and collapse some of these. Okay. And if I click on this little cube, on yours you may have a V or an S. If it's showing V, you click on that and you'll get an S. If you see a cube or a little squiggly line, then uh, the cube stands for volume or voxel. And the little squiggly line or an S is surface mode. So you can switch back and forth, no problem. But anytime you switch back to voxel mode, 3D Code is again going to try and keep this mesh nice and uniform. So now that I'm in surface mode, if I click on the pinch tool, you can see how it's deforming or pinching all these vertices together. I hit the 4 key to turn that off. Okay, you can see how it's creating a nice, clean, crisp crease. So when you're in surface mode, this may be one reason why you want to work this way. But if I go back to volume mode, you can see how it undid some of the detail uh, simply because of that uniformity. All right, so surface mode, again, uh, does not necessarily conform to this method. It doesn't calculate the volume and it deforms uh, much differently. So let's go ahead and go back to surface mode and hit the 4 key to bring the wireframe up. And so as you saw here, it tried to treat this uniformly, but if I switch to the move tool, and pull this out, you see all the stretching, okay? And it will stay that way, if that's what I want. Now, 3D Co. offers a, a new uh, option here, remove stretching. It works for uh, many of the tools here. So when I click that, I'm going to undo and do this one more time. Now, it still will not be completely uniform. What it will do is it's almost like decimation. With decimation, uh, the algorithm will try to give you resolution where you need it around edges, you know, hard edges and things like that, and it will leave it relatively low in areas where you do not need extra polygons. So remove stretching operates under the same principle. As you can see the stretching, boom. So it essentially decimated this particular portion, but if I zoom in, you can see how it gave me a little bit greater uh, level of density right here. So this is a, a essentially an option from the lay, a live clay tool set. Okay, and just I'll touch on this quickly. Live clay allows you instead of increasing the resolution across the entire model, which currently, as of this recording, if you're in volume mode, that's how it works. Again, you have the uniformity and uh, you don't have the ability to apply local levels of resolution, right? You do if you have separate layers like this, okay? So I could really crank the resolution up on the head and leave the rest of it low, but uh, as far as on the same object, in volume mode, I do not have this ability to dynamically subdivide or tessellate areas where I need extra resolution. So let's look at this. I'm going to click on the just the live clay brush and I can see a little thumbnail if I hover over the different tools okay and it tells me what it what it does so with the live clay brush what it will do is by default it will sculpt and dynamically tessellate at the same time but if you just want to go in and kind of define the areas where you want the extra resolution and then sculpt thereafter what you can do is just with your cursor here you can right click okay to scale your right click and drag left and right to scale your brush right click drag up and down
to increase or decrease the uh, intensity. So I'm going to go all the way down to zero. And so what's going to happen is it's going to ignore any sculpting. It's not going to deform anything. It's only going to apply the tessellation. So in my tool options panel, I can crank this up or uh, bring it down. So as I paint, you can see it will begin to tessellate it some. Now, I have the option to go over here and bring it up. Okay, and if I want to get ridiculous, uh, I can enter it numerically, let's say 5. And you'll notice with the large brush strokes, the performance will start to decline. You want to be careful with that because it's really, really tessellating it very, very fine. Okay, that's really, really dense. And you can see just how dense it is at the very bottom of your um, interface. It'll show you how many polygons you have on the layer as well as what's visible. So I'm going to undo that and probably bring it down. Ooh, no wonder I had it on 50 instead of 5. Okay, so let me try it again. I'm going to go, let's say, 4. It's not so bad. Okay. Now, I can also do this on the fly by going a little bit smaller on the brush size. And now it will actually increase the density. It's a bit strange in that way. But again, with larger brush size, you can affect it here. Or you can just scale your brush size down. It will apply density that way. Okay, so instead of having this much detail across the entire model, which could quickly start to bog down uh, your system and affect your performance significantly, you can just apply this in very localized areas. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. We'll go into that in greater detail later. So let's go back to our file menu under New, Continue. So uh, I hope that explained the difference at least initially, between surface and voxel sculpting. Uh, you probably want to start off oftentimes in volume mode again because it's more flexible and much more forgiving as you're working, as you're blocking out characters, or even um, when you're building models with the construction tools uh, in 3D Coat, you can start out with low to medium resolution and then perhaps move to surface mode for high to extremely high levels of resolution. Okay, So this repair scan mesh will actually bring you into the voxel sculpting room as well. Same with import image as mesh. And likewise what they do is help you start a little further along in the process saving you some clicks or saving you some time by going straight into a specific task. Okay, So for example if I had a, a scanned 3D mesh that I was bringing in, I probably would want to start here. And I can import it as just a you know standard voxel that we saw. Uh, same as surface. I can bring it as a surface mode object. And I could apply some thickness to it if I needed, or with base relief. I can also elect to close holes, uh, or not close any holes at all. Uh, close small holes and close all holes. Okay, so I'll go back. Import image as a mesh, color or uh, black and white, it doesn't matter. 3D Coach will apply any color image uh, that you have as vertex color. That's how it will store it. And you can export that directly back out to your 
standard 3D application and render that out uh, using um, vertex color maps. Uh, whatever texture, whatever shader you apply uh, in the diffuse channel, okay, the diffuse slot, you would apply a vertex color map in that channel uh, so that uh, your application can read that color information uh, as a texture map. So let's go ahead and get out of this because there is a video that goes into this in greater detail on the YouTube channel, okay, uh, the 3D Coat YouTube channel under the feature section covering the logo tool. Okay, so cancel that.